Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you our hearts are open, our desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, who before the passion of your only begotten Son revealed his glory upon the holy mountain, grant to us that we, beholding by faith the light of his countenance, may be strengthened to bear our cross and be changed into his likeness from glory to glory through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of De Deuteronomy. Moses said, The Lord your God will raise up for you a prophet like me from among your own people. You shall heed such a prophet. This is what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, If I hear the voice of the Lord my God any more, or ever see again this great fire, I will die. Then the Lord replied to me, They are right in what they have said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their own people. I will put my words in the mouth of the prophet, who will speak to them everything that I command. Anyone who does not heed the words that the prophet shall speak in my name, I myself will hold accountable. But any prophet who speaks in the name of other gods, or who presumes to speak in my name a word that I have not commanded of the prophet to speak, that prophet shall die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 111. Alleluia. I will give thanks to the Lord with my whole heart in the assembly of the upright in the congregation. Great are the deeds of the Lord. They are studied by all who delight in them. His work is full of majesty and splendor, and his righteousness endures forever. He makes his marvelous works to be remembered. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion. He gives food to those who fear him. He is ever mindful of his covenant. He has shown his people the power of his works in giving them the lands of the nations. The works of his hands are faithfulness and justice. 
All his commandments are sure. They stand fast forever and ever because they are done in truth and equity. He sent redemption to his people. He commended his covenant forever. Holy and awesome is his name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who act accordingly have a good understanding. His praise endures forever. A reading from Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth. Now concerning food sacrifice to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. Knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Anyone who claims to know something does not yet have the necessary knowledge, but anyone who loves God is known by him. Hence, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that no idol in the world really exists and that there is no God but one. Indeed, even though there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, as in fact there are many gods and many lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things and for whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, through whom all are all things and through whom we exist. It is not everyone, however, who has this knowledge, since some have become so accustomed to idols until now. They still think of the food they eat as food offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. Food will not bring us close to God. We are no worse off if we did not eat, and no better off if we do. But take care that this liberty of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. For if others see you who possess knowledge, eating in the temple of an idol, might they not, since their conscience is weak, be encouraged to the point of eating food sacrificed to idols? So by your knowledge, those weak believers for whom Christ died are destroyed. But when you thus sin against members of your family and wound their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food is a cause for their falling, I will never eat meat so that I may not cause one of them to fall. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Savior, Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus and his disciples went to Capernaum. When the Sabbath came, he entered the synagogue and taught. They were astounded at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. Just then there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And the unclean spirit, convulsing him and crying with a loud voice, came out of him. They were all amazed, and they kept on asking one another, What is this? A new teaching? With authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. At once his fame began to spread throughout the surrounding region of Galilee. The Gospel of our Savior. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Our scripture readings this morning share a common question. How to live as God desires. To help us understand how to live as God desires, the readings begin by describing what it looks and feels like to not live as God desires to go against what God's hope, God hopes for. Going against God's desires looks like demons. 
looks like eating food in such a manner that it creates the conditions for food injustice, for people to not have food when they need it. Looks like doing things that create the conditions for racism, poverty, hunger, and other things that cause a systemic disparity in the world. Many of us contribute to the problems of the world without even knowing we are doing so. These are our demons. Let's reflect a bit on who God is and how we know what God desires. Scripture tells us that in the beginning of creation, God existed. God existed before the beginning of creation. So who is God? God is known as the source of all creation, the energy source, the creative source, the ultimate being of life, however one depicts what that means. So in the beginning, there was God, and some say there was a void, a vast expanse of nothingness. Others say there was God and a mass of swirling chaos. Regardless, God as creative being has always existed as this force of creativity, causing creativity to happen, causing order to come out of chaos. Let's say that all creation poured forth from God's imagination. We studied that a bit over the summer with the Celtic spirituality, God's imagination. At first, what God imagined might have been like any creative process, a bit chaotic, unorganized, random. But as God considered the chaos and what God desired for creation, God began to organize the chaos, separating the mass of chaos by pulling from the void, land from water, sky from sun, stars and moon, people and animals. In the process of organizing and creating order, some, some theologians say that there is this piece of randomness, that chaos, that remnant that came forth from the void, this piece of chaos that remained. That remnant serves as creative energy, which can bring inspiration, and it can also bring chaos, or it can cause annihilation, this piece of randomness. That remnant serves as a way for us to remember that as God was creating and organizing from the chaos, using God's word, expressing God's self into creation, the ultimate energy that emits from God's word enables a force of power, the Holy Spirit, to activate creation and give creation the capacity to sustain, sustain its creative energy. But like all creative processes, there's also this shadow side, the other side, the side that tries to pull creation back into chaos, back into nothingness, back into a state that resists God. The demons in our scripture reading are the manifestations of that negative side, of that creative remnant. Demons in scripture are known as spiritual beings whose motivation is to pull creation back into the chaos, back into nothingness, because for the demons working against God and God's creative power is to restore what feels right and normal to them, the abyss, the void, the chaos. The demons want annihilation and death, not life and health. This is the story of life, the tension between life and death, between hope and despair, between good and evil, between God and the forces of chaos. Human beings have, have created systems of philosophy, which is knowledge and awareness, and also systems that include religion. There's lots of different religious faiths that try to describe what it means to be a human being in the world today and what it means to be connected to the divine one, the creator, to God. And they give us direction to navigate between hope and despair, between life and death, between God, creation, order, chaos, annihilation, and despair. The forces of chaos sometimes work within human beings themselves and the systems humans have created seeking to confuse us. It's as if this force is the one we should follow, enable, or give in to this force of chaos or despair. I've often said that the closer one gets to living as God desires, 
the more forceful the energy of chaos becomes. It's as if that energy can tell that we are starting to align with God and it wants to pull us back into the abyss. Seminary students, for example, experience this as they come closer to ordination. Suddenly roadblocks appear, challenges arise. Churches experience this as they come closer to living as God desires, to living out their purpose in the world. Circumstances become challenging. Nations encounter this as they start to live as God desires. People arise that try to force society back into chaos and disorder. How do we know if we are working and living as God desires or following for the creatures of chaos, the demons, if you will? Again, scripture gives us guidance. As God did in the beginning and throughout time, God is working to bring order out of chaos to create or restore wholeness for health and well-being, for hope and equity for all. God is always working against the chaos, against the demons that cause systems of oppression to rise up in human society against racism, against poverty, against hunger, against every way that one kind of people tries to have power over another. That was essentially the ministry of Jesus. He was working to dismantle the systems of oppression in his day, which were coming down from the Roman Empire and oppressing the people. So how does God do this? God does this through God's expressive word, activating people. As I said, through the incarnation and the teaching of Jesus, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God works, strives to work through us. In our gospel reading this morning, Jesus heals a man possessed by demons. He causes the demons to leave the man. He does this by naming them. Jesus has power over the demons because he names them. We can gain power over the systems of oppression in our lives and the world by naming them for what they are and then working to dismantle them as they rise up in each of us and in the world around them. We name them and then we were to dismantle them and the conditions that caused disorder in the first place, the conditions that created racial disparity, food insecurity, pollution, economic disparity, and all the other conditions that cause systems of oppression and suppression. We do this by working creatively to bring about order instead of inciting chaos. Last year, we reflected on the identity of Jesus in the Gospel of Matthew. Who is Jesus and who are we as a congregation? And who are we as individuals? This year, we'll continue to reflect on identity, but in the context of the Gospel of Mark, and we will think about identity as it's being revealed to us. Who is God calling us to be? I believe that we are standing at the threshold and about to step deeper and more clearly into God's call for us. And as we do so, we engage with the world that is also about to change. Let us pray together the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made a human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. 
Amen. In peace we pray to you, Lord God. For people in their daily life and work. For our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and, and the world. For peace between all nations and people, for those serving in harm's way. Especially for... We offer our prayers. For all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation. For, For the, the victims, victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For, For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God. For Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our preceding bishop. For Bonnie, our bishop, and for our clergy, we offer our prayers. For all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. We pray in thanksgiving for those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, for all ministers, lay, and ordained. We offer our prayers. For all who serve God and church. We pray for all who have died, especially... And we pray for these from our family and friends. We pray that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your love and kindness be upon them. Who, who put, put their, their trust, trust in, in you. you. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, we pray for those who are suffering in mind, body, or spirit especially, and now I invite you to refer to the parish bulletin for the names of the people in the parish that we are praying for, and to also add those from your family and friends. We pray for those for whom healing has begun. Hear us, Lord. For your mercy is great. God of peace, let us, your people, know that at the heart of tur turbulence there is an inner calm that comes from faith in you. Keep us from being content with things as they are, that from this central peace there may come a creative compassion, a third for justice, and a willingness to give of ourselves in the Spirit of Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. <laughs>
As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Mm. Amen. No, 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 be. May Christ's bright star enlighten your mind and heart as you strive for equality, justice, and kindness in the world. For life is short, and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who travel with us. So be swift to love, and make haste to be kind, and may the blessing of God, Creator, Redeemer, and Giver of life, be with you always. Amen.
in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.